caution. Over 25 kilos, heavy item. No kidding, heavy item. I've just weighed it. It's just over 30 kilos. And obviously, I've got a rough idea what it is. Apparently, Lenore ordered it because she thought I might like it to make something out of. Can you guess what it is? Very burr-like, isn't it? So, let's have a look what's inside. Well, it's well wrapped. Ooh, look. Oh, that's a beauty. Wow, that's, that's some depth to that as well. Crikey, what to make? I think I know what she wants me to make out of it. As to whether, ah, man, that is a really nice deep burl. That would make one splendid, nice deep bowl in the middle there. But I really like these nobules on the outside. They're quite different than the ones like the other Mali Burr type things I've turned. And it's a eucalyptus burl, obviously. Burr, burl. There's a lot of sap. You see this shiny stuff in there? That's all very much hardened sap. I think what I'm going to do is, is one of my Gaia pieces, I previously called them. The last video I did like this was, I called it ghost turning. Because of the big bit sticking out the side that you couldn't see when it was spreading around on the lathe. So for this one... I'm going to need to trim that down about halfway. I want to, it would be nice if I could try and save a smaller version, if you like, off the back and cut this maybe, I don't know, three inches, three inches deep and try and save some of that. Because at the moment, with the depth that is, that would be wasting an awful lot of wood. And I really don't want to waste that much wood. Now, it's not perfectly flat. I understand it's cut off the tree. It's got to dry. It's going to warp and the cuts aren't all good, always going to be perfect. So I've got quite a high area here, got quite a ridge all the way across the middle there. That's a little bit high through there, all in, including that. So I'm going to run the hand planer across that face just to get it a little more flat. That's a lot closer to flat now. Well, having attacked it with my handsaw, a big old handsaw and eventually a chainsaw i got through i haven't got anything to plank i don't really usually need one but oh still heavy look at that it's gorgeous i've got a lot of flattening off to make this a usable piece i've got a lot of flattening off to make this a usable piece because i only had a short shortish chainsaw which yeah you know, wasn't gonna go wash straight off but neither here nor there flung that off back with you in a mo, and that will do it's relatively the same height now i guess this is going to be the back i can only make this the front and i need to find the centrally weighted point of that which is right there so in a moment i'm going to put my big face plate on this this one the smaller burr in the background there i'll find the the weighted center on my spike in a moment and put the smaller face plate on and get some turning. Initially, all I want to do is make these the same height so it sits on the wall at the same height and I can actually have my French cleats probably across this side and dig out enough here to get a chuck grip in there. This is video part one of two. I think this is going to do the smaller one first, then we'll do the larger one because the larger one, to be perfectly honest, I'm a little bit scared of because it's quite big and quite heavy. And on my little lathe, it's really pushing the limits. So that's the next video. This one's about this one. Just on a quick look, catching here nicely. Not catching here yet, catching here. I can hear it hitting in two or three places. It's just the two places at the moment. I need to very carefully go at this.
There's still a good couple of inches there. And I can forego a couple of inches. Yeah. Now we're going to get around that. A little bit deeper, I think. scared the bleep out of me all that was was you see this you see my little arm down there that was just extending out and just catching on this piece of wood as it was coming around not that piece that piece there hardly even any marks on it jeepers creepers so to combat that it is an easy solution because i have come into this problem before it's just a little bit of electrical tape put that halfway around Make sure it's sealed but so it's easy enough to get off again but when that goes through it's not pushing through and it's also not interfering with me as i'm cutting oh that did scare me i must admit the chuck actual chuck can now fit inside that hole and now i just need to dig out a chuck grip i know part of my chuck grip is going to be missing but it won't be a lot i think it should be okay once i go down a bit further We'll have a look. We'll judge it in a minute. Whenever I move my rest, I always turn the wood by hand just to make sure nothing's catching, nothing's loose. Oh, it's just a habit. I'm afraid I do it for every time I stop and start the lathe again. <laughs> it's a good habit to have. And it's I, it's done me proud a few times where I've turned it. It's like clunk. Okay, there's something in the way. <laughs> Idiot. Especially when you're doing something like this. I have got a whole bunch missing, as you can see right here. Um, but I think it's only literally, look, it's only that much. I've turned things with a lot missing. Okay, I am not recommending this by any means. One should always go a little bit deeper to, to ensure they have a full chuck area. But, you know, let me do it. Learn by my mistakes. There you go. My chuck fits in my hole. And you can see very clearly... There's not much area missing down, 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 down in here. And my chuck fits in this bit here too. So happy days. That should be okay. This is going to be a fun turn because I went off a little bit with the chainsaw. And yeah, I've got a bit of digging out to do yet. But it's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. It's a beautiful piece of wood. And I love all these shiny bits in here, the eucalyptus, the sap, where it's gone really hard. Have fun with that in a minute, chipping out and hurting my hand. <laughs> yeah. Now, where should we put your viewing angle? How about there for a minute? Oh, here goes nothing. Everything tight. Well, it looks like I'm cutting here fine. Not cutting here. Not cutting there. A little bit here, maybe. A little bit there. Yeah, not a lot at the moment. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to fast forward this bit really quick till I got that really flat because it's going to take a while and it's chipping away at my hand nicely. Put you over here and speed you up. So the plan was to get that nice and flat, <laughs> but I got a bit over enthusiastic. I, um, I started shaping because I like shaping. I like doing the different angles. I've got a lovely deep V in there so far. It's a little bit rough, but it's not too sad. Nothing a bit of sandpaper can't sort out. Still digging this one out. I don't know how big to go with this one yet, but what I do want to achieve, as I have done similarly on other ones, is a central drop, if you like. Picture a splash a pebble going into water boom and you've got that mound of water here as the pebble hits in and comes up i don't know with a thin v here a medium v there and that's the large v this is meant to represent the as it peters out across the water you've got that very gradual curve and if you you can't obviously feel it you can only see it but right here there is a gradual curve on there and that i'm going to finish by hand 
on all these pieces on the outside where there's bits like this as I've mentioned before otherwise the sandpaper wraps around there and takes that edge off but all of this from here inwards I can do with the sandpaper now the issue I've got is this chainsaw mark it does mean this one needs to go a lot deeper which means this is gonna come out unfortunately it's a nice little nice little mound but there'll be something nice behind it anyway I need to come up quite a bit bigger with this but before I do anything more I think I'm gonna start work on that mound where the screws are in that's where I'm going down and in the middle is going to be quite a small little bump. Right, -o. so let's get that rest moved over. We'll start shaping there and we'll come back to this in a minute. As far as I'm concerned, this outside edge here is done. I've done up to that edge, that's fine. Final bit of shaping on this round, make this a bit bigger. Yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. And it's not too arduous on the hands, much. Okay, got a reasonable shaped ball in the middle there with a nice-ish slant down in here. I think I can make my small V here now. And then what do I do here? Is that going to be a massive channel? No, it's been another, it needs to be another one here. Is there? Big one, small one, medium one. Medium one needs to come about there. All right, let's mark that up. Okay, we're getting there. That's still a problem. I really should have just flattened this off <laughs> before I started shaping. But as I said, I got a bit excited. I want to, want to start digging it out. Let's actually flatten that face off. Then we'll determine where that, because I've got to get rid of this. That's, that's, a, that's a no brainer. So now I've finally got rid of that cut mark. Now I can shape, which is exciting. This is stunning. So, I want to keep that in as much as I can. So I want the V just this side of it. So if I, there we go. So there's a V, it will get a bit bigger than that. And there's a small one there on the lip of that, which is nice. I dig out this now and am I going to go through anywhere? You see what I mean? That is worth keeping <laughs> on full display, that scar there. Still got a tiny bit of room before I go through there. I just want to get the bottom of that just hold out slightly more. Not much, just want a nice subtle curve there. Okay, I didn't go through and I'm not going to go through, but I like, I love this grain just here. I love the grain all over it, but it's just looking at individual bits every now and again and going, whoa! Wow, look at that! Because <laughs> look, that is gorgeous! Ah, oh, man! I tell you what, this eucalyptus pearl is hard work, but it's worth it. <laughs> Lenore's going to have fun gilding this though, look. <laughs> All these missing chunks. <laughs> oh dear. No gold leaf in these holes though, Lenore, please. You're right. It'll be everywhere. It'll be a complete mess. There's a tiny bit in the bottom of that V there. And you know something's going to go fatally wrong. Not fatally, that's the wrong word to use. Uh, wrong. Something's going to go wrong when you go for that final cut. It's always that fear because everybody else does it. So anyway, here we go. Just tiny little bit in there. Phew. So I think I'm gonna sand this and up to here on the lathe with it spinning and turning. And then I'll take the whole thing off, stick the chuck in the, in the vise and do this outer edge. But I'll come back to you when I sand the ceiling this piece in here. It doesn't look like much at the moment because you've got all the dust around the outside edge, you've got all the dust in all the cracks. I'm going to quickly vac out all of the dust bits and put some sand sealer on these pieces that are exposed that have been clearly been sanded as opposed to the bits here that I haven't. 
What a difference. Here it comes, Brian. <laughs> oh, wow. I love this bit. Look at it. That's what it's going to look like when it's all finished and waxed and done done. I'm going to give that a chance to dry. That's the centre denibbed. And in the interest of not keeping any secrets from you on how I do things, I think the easiest method is going to be to attack this edge with one of the flap wheels. I'm going to start with 40 grit just on this one and try and shape it best I can so it's nice and smooth in this U or pit or whatever you want to call it. So face shield, ear defenders and face mask. Yeah, check. Well, that's looking dusty. Uh, hang on, let me get rid of that dust. Doesn't look, look nice, all these nice little shiny bits. I'm rather loving that, and the deep pockets of uh, resin stroke sap. Let's put a little bit of sand of sealer on there. I've done that to 320 grit in here. I haven't got it perfect in here, but a lot of that's being gilded. And Lenore will complain a little bit, but you know, I'm used to that. <laughs> oh dear, I'm in trouble. I wanted to see how these lighter bits came up on, on this. And I do have met my expectations. Quick update on part two, which isn't going to come out until the next video. But this is the other larger piece. Um, I should really weigh it before I carry on any further. I've mounted it to the lathe. I'm going to have some fun with the tool rest. Work that out later. But I also need to reposition this because, look, that's fine. But, yeah, no, it's a little bit heavy down this end. So I'm going to need to reposition the grip on the back so it's a little bit more even Stevens because that's going to shake my lathe to pieces. Bearing in mind, I don't have variable control speed. Whilst this lathe is called a variable speed wood lathe by Draper, it's a very basic model. The lowest speed it goes is 500 revolutions per minute, which is quite fast. Those of you with these fancy machines will know that that is fast for something this size. So I do need to get the balance just right. And that is not good enough. I still got to denib this. Uh, I've just fresh off the vice, taken the chuck out. I flip it over carefully. We've got our very rough looking back. Being very careful when I flip it over not to snap any of these little tender bits off. Trying to grab hold of the chunkier bits. And I've got my French cleats, some very rough cut ones without any drill holes in yet because I wanted to work out where I want to actually put the holes. Sort of measured them to size and the only real place, sensible place to put them, unless I've had a big one coming across here and another one coming across here, it's not really going to work anyway with the size of them. I'm not going to be able to put a cleat in. What I want to be able to do is have it one way or the other. Now, there is one particular way that I really like it. Unfortunately, it falls exactly in line with either this hanger or this hanger. Anyway, if I have my French cleat, if I have three of these, haha, I can have one on there, one on there, exact opposite, and this will fit in between. That will go on the wall, obviously, and that hooks straight on. Or hook straight on there. Hey, hey, hey. I'm not just... Okay, I'm not going to say it. Because I'm really not. That's tough stuff to drill. Can you see the drill holes I put in there? Yeah. Uh, I didn't film that because the focus on the camera wasn't focusing properly with me getting in the way. But yeah, hard stuff to drill. Hence, hard stuff to turn. Very chippy on my poor old hand, which is still a little bit sore, I must admit. Tidy up these French cleats. Get them nice and just 80 grit all over them. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video with this one finished. Hey, and we'll do the big bit on the lathe. That's going to be fun. I was going to end it there, but I've, I thought I'd quickly show you the waxing because this is such glorious wood and these whites or lighter browns and these dark browns. Oh, yeah, you need to see it. So quick hoover and a quick wax on and wax off all the way around. Doing it by hand like this, you do get the opportunity to find any minor imperfections. Lots of good light, and you can look at various different angles and see tiny little marks. I found a huge one. I've no idea how I missed it by hand sanding. But I've got a groove down here, which I've now got to attack 
probably from, crikey, 80 grit. Just this little area here. And then that'll spread slightly. But you know, so be it. So anyway, next time you'll see it is, okay, fine, I'm still here. I've just fixed that bit there. Rubbed it right back to 80 grit, through the grits to 2000, as I have done the whole thing, re-waxed this section and probably most of this, and box. Hang on. A little something I knocked together earlier with a little note at the end there saying wide. I'll put that in black in a moment. Wide, meaning the, the bit with more material on that side goes in there, and that sits in the middle there somewhere. And it stops in, aha, ha 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 ha. Right, a little bit of movement in there, but nothing that can hit the sides. So that should travel well now. I am gonna put a little bit of padding on the sides there just for protection, in case it magically rocks out and knocks against the side, and the padding will help it. And a little bit on the lid. Now it can go off to Lenore for gilding. 